The promises of God, very clearly one of the most important subjects of the Word of God. There are more than 7,000 precise, precious promises in the Bible. These were made by God to man. In today's teaching time with Dr. Lester Sumrall, we will be looking at the many facets of these glittering diamonds of truth. Some are startling, others breathtaking. Now, here is Dr. Lester Sumrall. I greet you in the name of the Lord, and uh, thank you for being in this exciting Bible class. There's nothing more exciting than the Bible. How many have already discovered that? <laughs> and the only people that the Bible is not exciting to is the ones that don't read it. Yeah, because the more you read it, the more exciting it gets. And so we can tell whether it's exciting to you or not uh, because we want to know whether you've read it or not. But when you read it, it gets exciting. And you want to know the truth? It's more exciting the more you read. <laughs> and so the more you read it, the more exciting it gets. And how many are glad you're excited about the Word of God? It tells you about tomorrow. It tells you about today. It tells you about yesterday. And how glad we are to have a hold upon truth that blesses and anoints and keeps. And all the people said, in our special study group here, we are at this time uh, have a series of studies on what we call the promises of God, uh, the commitments that God has made to mankind. And it's very necessary uh, for you to know those things. And not only know them, it's necessary to keep going through them, you know, uh, reevaluating them. Uh, more than reevaluating them, letting them pour back through you again on the inside, giving you strength. His promises bring strength. Say strength. strength. That's kind of poor. I say strength. strength. That's what I mean. <laughs> I don't mean we're sick. Bless God, we're well. And we thank God for his strength. And the promises of God are related to the Holy Spirit is today's lesson. And I'm reading to you first in 2 Corinthians uh, 2 and 10. God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. It, the Spirit of God, that's with a capital S, speaking of the third person of the Trinity, that God has revealed the great truths of His Word to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things. Again, with a capital S, the personality, the Holy Spirit. He searcheth all things. Now, when He searches all things, I believe that's all things. And if you want to know who is searching out things, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that's searching out all things. Ananias and Sapphira found this out. They came and lied about how much they sold a piece of ground for and how much of it they were going to give to the church in Jerusalem. And they deliberately lied about it. And the Spirit searched them out. The Spirit searched them out. And you know the end of those two people that lied to the Holy Ghost. So God reveals the truths of the Word of God by His Spirit. And the Holy Spirit searcheth out all things. He is a searcher. And then it says, yes, even the deep things of God. So not only the things that are around about us does he search out, but our relationships with God, our growth in God, the anointing of God that's reaching out to us. The Holy Spirit is a third person of the Trinity, is involved in the great promises that we believe, and we want to reach in there and enjoy them today. The Holy Spirit, uh, this is his dispensation. We had the dispensation of the Father when God dealt directly with humanity and with mankind. We had the dispensation of the Son when the Son lived upon this earth and addressed himself to the problems of mankind into the giving of his life that the world might be saved. And when he went back and was seated by the Father in heaven, and we had the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. And we are living in that dispensation. It was prophesied that he would come. That's in Joel 2 and 28. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. So the dispensation that we're living in today is not just a regular one. It didn't come because one broke down. <laughs> and now in the, in the Old Testament, a new dispensation became because the old one broke down. Well, we didn't get this one that way. 
Because when the Lord Jesus Christ gave his, uh, gave his life on Calvary to save the world, nothing broke down. It broke up. Went the right direction. And he, we got a promise from that moment. Now, I'm going back to sit by the Father, and that's not defeat. Bless God, and you get to sit by the Father, that's victory. And so we weren't talking about something breaking down. We were, trans, we, <clears throat> we were, we were transforming a situation here. The Lord Jesus says, I can't be with you in person now. I'm going to be with the Father, but I'm going to send you another comforter. And when he is come, he will teach you all things. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. And so this is the Old Testament uh, prophecy relative to the outpouring of this mighty surge and move of the Holy Ghost in the world we live in today. In Isaiah 44 and 3, it says, I will pour water upon, that, upon him that is thirsty. How many were thirsty before you got in contact with Jesus? You didn't know what you wanted. You were just aching down inside and, and you were just nervous down there. You know, it was just something roving around. You said, oh, I just wish I could get satisfied. You'd run to California, got out there and saw the <clears throat> desert and decided to come back where we got some grass. What was it you said? You went to the mountains and saw they were bare and you decided that this is a pretty nice part of the world after all. Well, thank you very much. The heart of man is not satisfied naturally. It has to be satisfied supernaturally. You can go to the Garden of Eden, and if you don't have the presence of God there, you are not satisfied. The only thing that satisfies the human spirit is the Spirit of God itself. How many glad you're satisfied? I don't have to go anywhere to be happy. I am happy. I don't have to go anywhere to be blessed. I am blessed. <laughs> Glory be to God. Tell the devil I said so. <laughs> I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Brother, if you're thirsty, let's get it. And floods upon the dry ground. We just, we just don't have to walk in desert, spiritually speaking. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. This is God speaking through the possibly the greatest prophet of the Old Testament named Isaiah. And, and uh, it's, it's beautiful. Then we have also in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, that he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. This was John speaking of Jesus. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so these are all promises related to the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and which he would be given. Now these all have been fulfilled. You and I have them today, and how glad we are for it. And then in John 14, at verse 16, uh, the Lord Jesus made a commitment regarding the Holy Spirit. He says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Say forever. That means he's not going anywhere. That means he's not going to leave. That means that it forever is forever. And so that means there's going to be no change. When he says forever, then we're going to have him forever. And so we have the Holy Spirit abiding with the body, with the church, with each one of us forever. And how glad we are for him. And that moves right into what Peter said in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, where on the day of Pentecost, the church was born and they had just received the Holy Ghost. They're the first ones to receive. And Peter said unto them, and that was to those in verse 37. We're reading verse, uh, chap Acts chapter 2, verse 38, verse uh, 37. In, the, the, the multitude said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter responded unto them and said, repent. Now, that was a kind of a, kind of a uh, naughty thing to do, you know? You know who he was talking to? The most religious people in the world. He was talking to people that had come to Jerusalem to worship God because they loved God. They had come to Jerusalem to worship God, and he said, now get right with God while you're here. That's like telling all my saints, you know, you get saved, saints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's what he told them. Uh, he said, there's another experience bigger and better than you've ever had yet. And they said, what can we do? He said, well, repent first. And then he said, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And then ye shall receive this gift of the Holy Ghost, for this promise is unto you. Not only just to us, we have it already. It's to you. It's to your children. You don't have to tell your kids, I'm sorry, nothing for you. There's nothing for you. It's all for me. 
Wouldn't that be a pitiful world if the dead's got it all? You still here? Yeah. When, when, when I was a little boy, uh, and, and we had fried chicken at our house. How many ever had fried chicken at your house? You know, my mother would pass it to my father first. And I always thought that was a mistake. And I often wonder why she didn't pass it to me first, you know. And I used to say, I wish, wish one day I'd get big and they'll pass that plate to me first. Uh, because you get the choice piece, you know. You don't, you don't end up, uh, you, know, you know, down south, they used, to, they used to even fry the feet. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, yeah, you, you don't do that. You just eat the leg. Uh, they, they fried the feet. They, I mean, sometimes that's what you got too. And they were very careful that you got a wing or something. Well, you know, a boy's a boy. He's looking for the thigh, for the leg. You better believe it. But the promise is not only to the older ones, to the moms and dads. Uh, they, they, they get a blessing, but the, the promise is to the children, too. How many glad your children can get everything you've got? They surely can. And he says another step. And to all. Don't you like that word all? How many, how many love that word all? Man, I like that word. When it comes to all, I just, hey, when it gets to all, that gets me in it, you know. If, they, if it was in, any limitations, I might miss it. But if, if there are no limitations, I'm, I'm in it for sure. And to all that are far off. Now, far off means us. You know, we, we were far off. We we're 2,000 years away. Uh, to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, uh, whatever God did, for those people on the day of Pentecost, he'll do exactly for us today, or that verse is not true. Did you hear that? Did everybody hear that? You, you better read it again, because some of you might have thought that God could do something 2,000 years ago he can't do now. Then this scripture is not true. They were standing there, and the last few minutes they received the infilling of the Holy Ghost, and they were all speaking their spiritual heavenly language there. And 3,000 people would say, hey, what can I do to get this? And Peter in Acts 2.38 gave them the reply. He said, if you get your heart right with God, if you're going to waters of baptism, which means that you're, you're, you're dead to the things of the world and you rise, you read Romans chapter 6, it tells you exactly what it's all about. And then he says, now it is for you. It's not only just for us 120 here. It is for you. But I, want to know, I want you to know something. It's for your kids too. We don't leave them out of this. And then he said, not only is it for your children, it's for all. And brother, that's, that's got it. That are far off, just reach as far as you want to. Even as many as the Lord our God shall keep out there calling and calling and calling. It's for them too. Now the call of God is the call of repentance. And as long as God is saving a soul, he's also filling them with the Holy Spirit. You believe that? Yeah, he's not doing one without the other. You say, I haven't received it. Well, get busy and do it. Get busy. And do it in Jesus' name. You say, well, what would keep me from it? Well, nothing. Nothing would keep you from it. If you think it's for you tomorrow, you won't ever get it today. Did you hear me? There are people that are always going to get something tomorrow. Well, tomorrow never comes, so you don't ever get anything. I want all my blessings now. I want all my blessings today. In Jesus' name. I want all my goodies now. I did something this week. I hope you won't tell anybody. They had a, they had a nice meal before us, so and I looked around and ate my dessert first. I, you say, well, why did you do it? Well, I didn't want to eat it after I was full. I wanted to eat it when I'd enjoy it the most. So I ate it while I was hungry. And it just tasted so good. The other folks there were just looking at me, you know. And I says, well, I want to enjoy this, so I'm going to eat it when I'm hungry. I don't want to be like the man that was always saving up. He said, you know, one day I'm going to need a t eat a T-bone steak. And he said, he just kept saving up for it and saving up for it and saving up for it, just eating hamburger and saving up for it. And when he got the money, when he got the money to buy one, he had lost his teeth. <laughs> and he still had to eat hamburger. I'm eating all my T-bones while I'm young. Bless God. <laughs> and David said he'd... He, he'd he had never seen the righteous forsaken. I'm going to have them all the way through. <laughs> what did you say? Amen. You can too. You can have everything you believe God for. Can you say amen? amen. Don't, don't ever put a question mark where God's put an exclamation point. And don't ever do that. 
If God's put an exclamation point, you've got no business kinking it around and turn it around. And you, you just leave it alone because it means exactly what it says. You believe that today? Yeah, we found it out so many times. In John 14, 16, the Lord Jesus said to the body, says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. We also read that the Holy Spirit reveals Christ as Lord. Now, that's very particular. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 3, it says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that something? No man can call Jesus Lord unless something happened on the inside of him. A sinner can't call him Lord. He's not your Lord. He is a Messiah. He'd like to be your Lord. You know what a Lord is? He's the boss. <laughs> yeah, you read the old history where there were lords and over, over, over the slaves, and that means they were a boss. And, and, and until the Lord becomes your boss, he's not your Lord. He's my Lord, but he's not your Lord. He becomes your Lord when you say, not my will, but thy will be done. Hey, then he's Lord. When you say, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll be what you want me to be. He's your Lord then. How many want to make him Lord? Wave your hand. <laughs> Praise God forever. Make him Lord. He is a Lord of Lords in Jesus' name. And so the Holy Spirit reveals Christ as Lord. Now, this can only be done through the Holy Spirit. There's no carnal way, natural way, human way, intellectual way. We must, he, he becomes Lord in our lives by the function and the operation of the Holy Ghost. Also, the Holy Spirit teaches us or testifies to us of Christ. In John's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 26, the Word says, When the Comforter is come, Jesus is still speaking, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Isn't that beautiful? Here, the Comforter will come. He hadn't gotten there yet. And, and Jesus was right there with him at that moment. And he says, I'll send him from the Father. So you have the three that he's speaking to you of there. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now, when the Holy Spirit functions, he always, never fails, he testifies of Christ. He witnesses to Christ. You let anyone speak in a spiritual language, let anyone interpret that language, and immediately the Holy Spirit is witnessing of Christ. <laughs> he is never witnessing of himself. He's never saying, now, I am the Holy Spirit, and you must honor me. I've never heard that in my whole life. And I've been around this all my total life. Never, he never speaks of himself. He never testifies of himself. He always testifies of the greatness and the wonderfulness of Jesus and the availability of Jesus. He's always saying, he is available, he is available, he is available, and I have his gifts that I will bring to you. He is, he is the bearer of good gifts. Praise God. They're friends today in our class. They, they need a touch of God. I feel it so deep in my inside. And some of us have followed the Lord for some time, and, and at this point in our spiritual experience, we need a touch from God, and I believe God wants to do it. I believe God is ready to do it. I believe God wants to help you and to bless you. I believe God wants to make these scriptures come alive in you. I'd hate to think that I was a robot just standing up here saying things and you were robots and getting nothing. We are real human persons. We are immortal souls. We are the apex of all God's creation. God loves us and he cares for us and he's wanting us to know the promises of God and the promises in relation to the power of the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and these are the promises. They are ours. Say ours. They don't belong to the hierarchy. Uh, they don't belong to some uh, very unique person. They belong to all of us. And every one of us has an equal choice. You're the only one that can limit what God does for you. You hear me? You're the only one that can limit what God does for you. I'm the only one that limits God in my own life. And I feel ashamed of myself very often. I, say, well, I get God doing more for me, you know, because I'm the only limitation to myself in relation to the promises of God. Let's release ourselves to God. Can you say amen? amen? Now, not only will the Holy Spirit, when he comes, is for all generations, and that he will reveal Christ as Lord, and that he will testify of Christ, that whatever he hears, he'll testify of Christ. But he is also our teacher. 
And that's in John 14 and 26. He says, he shall, he shall teach you all things. Isn't that great? I have had, I, I have had, you know what my wife said the other morning? She turned on me and said, you must write in your sleep. She says, you can roll over and hit that pencil and that pad you have on the side there and start writing out a sermon so quick and says, you, you must be doing it in your sleep. No, it's the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, when your mind is fresh and you've been sleeping in the Lord anyway, and you poop, you come out of it, man, you can't lose it. You know, your poor little old mind can't hold it. So you just grab it and write it down so you can keep on using it. And, and it's the movement of the Holy Spirit within us. I want to tell you something. When I think of something sweet at night, I get up and write it down. And that's where you lose yours. You're too lazy. Well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> you don't get up and write it down. You, and you know what you say? You say what I used to say. Oh, I remember tomorrow. No, you won't. How many have already forgotten some of it? Now, be honest with me. That's all of us. That's right. You just can't remember. You got to write it down. And, and I do it. I, I, I do it. But wherever I am, when the Lord gives me sweeties and nice things, at night, I write them down because he is our teacher. The Holy Spirit brings these things to us and, and he is our teacher. He says, he shall teach you all things. He shall bring all things to your remembrance. Isn't that amazing? He brings them to your remembrance. You know, when I'm speaking, oftentimes things come to me and, and I, I hope they take them down on tape because I haven't thought of them for 40 years. And suddenly they become bright as crystal. The Holy Spirit brings them to your remembrance. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't you glad you have the Holy Spirit? Aren't you glad he can do great things for you? It is just wonderful. It is just, bring them to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Now also, the Holy Spirit brings comfort. The Holy Spirit brings comfort. Now, uh, anything from heaven brings comfort. God brought comfort. The, the night that he, he, he wrestled with Jacob and, 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 uh, and Jacob knew he was a big sinner, and he had mistreated everybody, and he had lied to everybody. And, and when, when he finished that off, and God said, your name is no longer Jacob, which means supplanter, but your name is now Israel, uh, what comfort he had inside. He had a relationship with God, and he knew it, you know? What comfort to Mary Magdalene that he went out and spent her life and, for the devil and as a harlot and delved into the in iniquities of her time until she had seven evil spirits dwelling in her, and for Jesus to take them out and for her to have comfort, her to have comfort. You want to know something? We live in a world today that needs more comfort than any time in the history of the world. There's more hurt people right now than there ever were in the history of the world. There are more moral bankruptcies right now than ever in the history of the world. There are more sad people right now you know, we've got more to make us glad than we ever had, and it don't make you glad. Are you still here? Yeah. You know, the things of this world don't mean anything. I, I stayed in a room this week that was possibly one of the nicest rooms I've ever stayed in my life. And you know what I walked through the room and said? I said, this is nothing. I'd just rather be with my wife. Yeah. So I, this is nothing. And, and, you know, I, I, I like the rustic anyway. I feel better in, in, in the rustic. You, you get the carpet too thick and I fall down, you know. <laughs> and I, 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 I like the rustic. And uh, I was born for the plains. I should have been a cowboy, I guess, or something like that. <laughs> Away out in the west somewhere. But if you need comfort today, we, we have him. Uh, and, and Acts 9 and 31, it says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and they were edified, which means built up, and they were walking in the fear of the Lord, which is great peace in the heart. And in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. They were walking in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to ask you very pointedly, are you walking in the comfort of the Holy Ghost? Now, I want to say that I am walking in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. I am comforted in a world that's struggling, in a world that's hurt, in a world that's sad, in a world that's disconnected. I am walking in comfort because my comfort comes from above. My comfort comes from God and not from anything on the face of this earth. And so therefore, comfort is a great, great thing. Comfort. Oh, to live in this world with everything healed inside. Everything healed inside. Ah, 
How wonderful it is to have the comfort of the Lord. How many? Glad you got it. <laughs> the comfort of the Lord. You were hurt, but you're not hurt anymore. You were sad, but you're not sad anymore. And, and you were going in a quandary, round and around and around in it, but, but you're not confused anymore. You're going in a straight line. You're comforted in God. Real comfort. Now, comfort is healing. Comfort is not pushing it under the rug and coming back to look at it someday. Comfort, it disintegrates, and it's gone, and, and you're clean of it. It's gone, and you're comforted. Aren't you glad for comfort? Aren't you glad for it? All right. Uh, the promises of God in relationship to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also speaks to us of the last days. Now, that would be a very long dissertation if we were to follow through with it. But the Holy Spirit speaks of the last days. In 1 Timothy 4 and 1, it says now, the Spirit... And that's the capital S there. The Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly, that in the latter times, latter times today, that some shall depart from the faith. How many know you can't go out of this room till you come in? Some shall depart from the faith, and they shall give heed, heed to seducing spirits, lying spirits, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. We're living in that hour right now. We're living in that hour at this very moment. Now, the Holy Spirit revealed that. And one of the promises of the Holy Spirit is to tell us accurately what the last days are going to be like. So rely on the Holy Spirit to speak to us of the last days in which we live, how we should live before God, and how we should stand before Him. That He will keep us until He says, come up higher. How many believe that? I believe it too. Father, we want to thank you for students. We want to thank you for students of the Word of God. There are many students in all kinds of vocations today, but we're students of the Word of God. We read the Word. And it doesn't matter what we do in our secular lives, what kind of business we have, we still have another world, and that's our spirit. We're not totally body. We're not totally soul, but we are in the spirit. And we ask you, Lord, to teach our spirits and let the Holy Spirit guide us. And let the Holy Spirit indoctrinate us to truth and show us in these last days how to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. I believe you to bless everyone. And that when Jesus comes, every one of us will be ready to go and be with him forever. We thank you for it. We love you for it. And all the people said, Amen. Today's lesson is from the Promises of God teaching series. We hope that you will apply the Word of God discussed in today's program to your own life. An audio cassette of today's lesson is available upon request. To order, send a donation of $5 or more to Lassie, P.O. Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. Please mention the program number on your screen when ordering. This program has been made possible by private contributions to LaCie. This has been a LaCie Broadcasting Network production.